We commonly use fasteners to create non-permanent joints that resist tensile, moment, and shear loads between two or more objects. Regardless of if the type of threaded fastener is a bolt and nut or a common screw, there is interest in understanding the forces that withstand these loads, as well as the initial clamping force called pretension or preload. As the nut is twisted after making initial contact with the member that is being clamped, the nut stretches the bolt, which produces a reaction force that we call the clamping force. In the case of screws, let's say a cap screw, as the screw is tightened, a section of its body will also be stretched, generating this clamping force. In both cases, as the fastener is tightened and stretched, the members themselves are compressed, and the forces that go into them are also of interest to calculate the percentage of any external load or the preload that goes into the members and the percentage of any external load or preload that goes into the fastener. In today's video, we will develop two main equations to calculate the fastener or bolt stiffness and the member stiffness. And notice that I will use the bolt stiffness term interchangeably with fastener, as the expression will work for both. We define the grip L as the total thickness of everything that's clamped. In the case of the bolt and the nut, this includes the washers. And for some screws, like this cap screw, if you're using washers, the thickness of the washer is also included. The stiffness of the portion of a bolt or screw inside the grip will have two zones, the unthreaded shank portion and the threaded portion. Of course, many screws and even some bolts are fully threaded, for which the calculations of the fastener stiffness will be much simpler. Because of these two zones, and seeing as the elastic stretching or elastic deformation of the fasteners is linear before the yielding, like with every other material subjected to an axial load, again before yielding, the stiffness constant of the bolt, and some screws, will be that of two springs in series, one for the threaded zone, and one for the unthreaded zone. In case you've forgotten how springs in series are added, just look at the overall displacement of two springs in series when they are subjected to a force F. The total displacement is equal to the sum of the displacement of each spring, which in turn are all equal to the force over the stiffness, the equivalent stiffness on the left and the stiffness of each spring on the right. Dividing by F yields the equation we need. Solving for K, we get K1 times K2 over K1 plus K2. And since the two quote-unquote springs are the two zones of the bolt, the threaded and unthreaded zones, KT and KD, the bolt stiffness is equal to ADATE over ADLT plus ATLD. Now, there are many standards for bolts, cap screws, and machine screws. Several tables and equations on your textbook will show dimensions for threaded and unthreaded portions. For rules and expressions to find out thread lengths, major, mean and root diameters, and everything else you need to estimate the bolt stiffness like AT. However, you don't really need a compendium of tables and equations to look these up for a particular fastener you want to use. You can easily look up a fastener you have online or find a fastener that has the dimensions that work for your calculations, also online. The subscripts T are for the threaded portion within the grip, so the length LT is not the total threaded length, but whatever portion of it is inside the grip L. AT uses the tensile stress area, which appears in textbook tables, but it's just the area using the mean value between the pitch diameter and the root diameter. And the subscripts D refer to the unthreaded portion of the grip. So AD is the cross-section area using the major diameter of the fastener, and LD is the unthreaded length. So for example, if you go into MacMaster and look up a cap screw, you can easily find all the dimensions you need to estimate the bolt stiffness, like the threaded length. If there's anything else you need that does not show up in the vendor's website, you just look it up and websites with ANSI charts will have everything you need for the other variables. Like for example, the pitch diameter and the minor diameter to calculate AT. Moving on to the member stiffness, it's common to have more than two members inside the grip of a fastener. For example, washers would be a part of the member stiffness calculations. Just like with the bolt stiffness, the equivalent member stiffness can be calculated as springs in series. Soft gaskets or even low elasticity o-rings can often be neglected as their stiffness is so small it's comparatively negligible. When looking at the stress profile patterns within the members clamped by a fastener, you'll find that it resembles a curved conical shape. A simplified version of this, which is still more conservative than the real scenario, would be a cone. With a half apex angle alpha that has taken a value of 45 degrees for old and very conservative calculations and between 25 and 33 degrees for most combinations. We will use a value of 30, which is a reasonable value for our calculations here. 
Since the cross-section area increases as you move into the member, the displacement delta from axial loading will not be directly proportional to the length or the distance x. However, we can still write d delta as pdx over ea, where a is a function of x. The area at any point x would be the area of a ring where the inner radius is the radius of the hole where the fastener passes through, meaning the bolt major diameter or nominal diameter, and the outer radius can be calculated by adding the opposite side of the triangle on each side using the tangent function and the radius of the washer, gasket, or bolt head. We can use these dimensions and the equation for the area of a ring to find an expression for the area as a function of x. We can substitute it in the displacement equation and integrate with respect to x from 0 to the thickness t of the member. The result of the integral would be the displacement, which means that the stiffness is the load over the displacement. With alpha equal to 30 degrees, we get a better expression for k. And this is the expression you would use for each section of the member's calculations. What this means is that it's not one stiffness coefficient per member, but for each section. Let's say you have two members and a washer between a bolt head and the nut. The washer is 0.095 inches and the first member is 0.5 inches thick and the other one is 3 fourths of an inch. The conical profile that we would use to calculate the member stiffness, Km, would have what we call a frustum right in the middle of the grip. Therefore, if we assume three distinct materials for the washer and the two members, we would have four K values in this case, not three and we would use the member stiffness expression four times. Lowercase d will be the same for all k's, still the major or nominal diameter of the bolt, but the outer diameter, capital D, will change for each k. For k1 and k4, capital D will be the diameter of the bolt head and the nut, respectively, let's say 0.75 inches for both, and a simple calculation would be needed for capital D for k2 and k3. For example, 0.75 plus 2, 1 on each side, shorter sides of the 30 degree triangle for an x value of 0.595, which is 0.595 tangent of 30 for the capital D of K3. Let's look at a full example to see how we use the member stiffness equation. A 2 inch steel plate and a 1 inch cast iron plate are compressed with one bolt and nut. The bolt is a 1 half inch dash 13 UNC. I would like to find a bolt that has a length that is suitable for this application and determine the bolt stiffness and the stiffness of the members. The first step is to find a bolt, 1 half inch 13, that is long enough to hold both members and the nut and the other end. I do this by going to McMaster, I click on screws and bolts, I look up the thread size 1 half inch 13, I choose a hex head type, and let's say I'm looking for a stainless steel bolt for high pressure applications. Since the members add up to 3 inches, I'm gonna go with a 3.5 inch long bolt so that the nut can be screwed in on the other end. From here, I can see that the threaded length is 1.25 inches, which means that the non-threaded length is 2.25 inches. I can make sure that the nut will be fully engaged by looking up its height, which shouldn't be more than the extra 0.5 inches beyond the 3 inches of the members. Knowing that this bolt and nut combination works, I can proceed to identify the variables that will allow me to calculate the bolt stiffness, LT, AT, and AD. The length of the threaded portion within the grip will be the grip minus the unthreaded length, LD. The cross-section area of the unthreaded portion will be the area of a circle with the nominal diameter one half of an inch. And by looking up the root diameter and the pitch diameter for a one half inch 13 with a class 2 thread fit, I can find a value for AT of 0 0.1419 inches squared. I would use these values for my bolt stiffness expression. For the member stiffness calculations, I would find that the frustum is at 1.5 inches. The lowercase d would be the nominal diameter of the bolt, 0.5 inches, and the capital D values for K1 and K3 would be the diameter of the bolt head and the diameter of the nut, respectively. Capital D for K2 would be equal to 0.75 plus 2, 1 tangent of 30. The thickness values t's for k1, k2, and k3 would be 1.5, 0.5, and 1, respectively. 
Using the expression for the member stiffness and the values for K1, capital D1, and T1, and doing the same for the values of K2 and K3, I would be able to find the member stiffness for each section 1 to 3. And since we know how to add up stiffnesses in series, the final value for the member stiffness would be equal to 7.67 megapounds per inch. What we did here today is important, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, because by having either a preload or an external load, we will be able to eventually know what percentage of it goes to the member and what percentage goes to the bolt. To see more examples like this one in more detail, with several schematics and drawings where the different variables capital D and T for the different member sections are explicitly pointed to, as well as more detailed FRUSTA calculations, make sure to check out the links in the video description. In the next video, we will talk about the proof strength and by knowing the stresses that the bolt is subjected to, we will be able to calculate a factor of safety which often is estimated in more than just one way. Thanks for watching.